I'm working on my 71 F250 and I'm installing a new gas gauge here in my truck. Uh, this is just an extra one that I have, but uh, for this video, I want to share with you guys what I've been working on and the issues that I run into. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have run into this issue as well, especially if you're doing a kind of older car or truck project with the aftermarket gauges and aftermarket uh, sending unit here. So there's not a single video on YouTube explaining why my gas gauge is reading the complete opposite. So what I mean by that is I got this all hooked up. I've got, I'm running an auto meter gas gauge uh, on, on my dash. And then this is an OE uh, sending unit. So when I got it all hooked up, the actual meter is reading backwards. So full is empty and empty is full. And, uh, and that really scratched my head. It's like, what is going on? And not knowing really all the details about a sending unit and a gas gauge, I thought they're all kind of the same, to be honest with you. So after doing a ton of research, well, I learned a lot. And that's what I want to share with you guys in this video. Everything that I've learned, and I think it's going to really help you guys install your next gauge in your car or truck. And especially if you guys are running into the same issue where when you get it all hooked up, the gas gauge is only going halfway or it's not reading all the way full or empty correctly. Well, this video is going to be super helpful and all those to answer all those questions for you guys so let's get started okay, so we're here in front of my computer uh, in the shop and i just want to share with you guys looking at the oe fuel sender and some other aftermarket fuel senders and different gauges and looking at some of the specs on that because that's good because that's going to be really critical uh, to understand this video so this is the uh the, their oe fuel sending unit that goes into my F-150. So every fuel sending unit has a, a uh, an ohms or ground resistance uh, reading. So it's called ohm range. Let me zoom in, on, zoom in here, guys. So this particular OE goes from 70 ohms to 10 ohms. Now what's really important here is to understand that when it's 70 ohms, it's empty. When it's 10 ohms, it's full, okay? So that's really important number to remember on whatever project you're working on, you need to understand what kind of sending unit is sitting inside your guys' uh, truck or car. It might be aftermarket. But if you don't know, um, I would suggest looking it up or you can pull the sending unit, unit out and just, you know, and testing it yourself. And to test that, you need a multimeter and you're gonna set your multimeter on ohms. And your ohm is this little horseshoe icon so that's kind of universal ohms icon on all multimeters um, so once you set that up you can check the ohms or continuity so this is my OE OE sending unit what I'm gonna do is let me grab an alligator clip here this, this will make it much easier I'm gonna put the black one on the ground and red on the sending unit so I'm gonna connect the red to my sending unit post, and then the black to the ground. And you're gonna hear a beep right here. So remember, 70 ohms is, is empty and 10 ohm is full, right? So if this, if right now, the way it's orientated, this would suggest that my gas tank is full. So it's reading 7.3. So that's really close to 10 ohms. I'm okay with that. Now let's go all the way down to empty. So as you're driving, this float goes down right it goes down 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 and it's reading at 70 and some and something so now i know what my ohm reading here is on my on my fuel sending unit all right so then you might be wondering okay well i'm going to go down to o'reilly's and pick me up a, a fuel gauge like this one or whatever because they're all the same bosch equius you know these auto parts plays all kind of carry the same thing uh, this is a pretty popular brand. I'm not a big fan of these Equius. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, their brand. Uh, they're, they're very cheesy when you turn it on and off. Yeah, it's, you know, these cheap Chinese made. These are like 30 bucks, but it works. But let me show you guys. So let me zoom in here on this. And you can see that in the ohm resistance, when the gas is full, it needs to read 90 ohms. And then when it's empty, so resistance, ohm, when empty, 
it will read zero ohms. So if you're connecting this to like your, 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 your factory sender or this particular sender, right? It's not gonna work. It's gonna read just the opposite. And that's ex this is exactly what happened to me. I just went and bought uh, auto meter gauge. You know, it was one of their uh, top of the line pro model gauge. Thinking, bam, it's gonna work, perfect. Oh no. So let me give you a different example. To make this work with my OE sender, you need to go out to, well, let me just show you what I ordered here. It's, it's on its way. So this is uh, an auto meter fuel gauge. It's not the one that I really wanted, but this is the only one I could find that has the correct, that has the correct uh, ohms reading. So this is what I wanted was two and one sixteenths to fit in my existing um, mounting bracket. So look, this has a 73 ohms, right? When empty. That's exactly what happened when I when I when I dropped the the plunger down to all the way to the bottom, it read 70 something, right? So that's perfect. And then 10 ohms, 10 ohms for full. So that letter F right there, 10 ohms is full. And this was reading like around seven point, I think seven or seven point six. So this gauge is going to work perfectly with my OE sending unit. Okay, so let me give you a different example. Okay, so let's just say that uh, you don't know what kind of sending unit you have inside your car or truck or whatever. And, for, and to take it out, it might be a real pain in the butt. So, uh, what you can do is you, you can buy a aftermarket, um, well, they're all kind of aftermarket, but you can buy this universal sending unit by Autometer. Looks like this. Let me pull it up here on the screen. Uh, here we go. It looks like this, and this is uh, about 45 bucks at O'Reilly's and it's made by Autometer. So uh, this one here can work both directions. So coming out of the box, let me just show you guys what this is all about. Let me move the camera back a little. Okay, so let's hook up this one. So red to the sending unit post and the black one to the ground. And we're gonna get some beeps here. Okay, so on, on this one, can you guys see the screen? No, not really. Let me pan over here on the screen and zoom in. All right, so for this um, kind of a universal uh, fuel sender, this reads range from 33 to 240 ohms, but it doesn't tell you, uh, you know, full or empty reading, right? Because with this particular one, you can go both directions. So. 33 to 240 ohms, man, that's a pretty big range. And for you to have a good accurate reading on your on your gauge, you gotta really trim this thing, because this is this this plunger piece right here is trimmable to the size you need, and though all the instructions is in the box uh, to get it right. So if I was to plug this in, there's no way it's gonna work like this. But what you can do is they have this little white uh, module on the back here, you can unscrew this and turn it upside down 180 and it'll read correctly. So let me just show you guys. And, and by the way, this particular sending unit uh, has a multiple mounting points here. You can make it shorter or longer. So it's pretty nice. I already tested this in the, in the truck. Um, although it does kind of work, but not really. It's not gonna work for what I need to read accurately. Okay, so what I was saying here is you can take this and mount it 180 degrees like this, okay? Now that we're empty, right, because this floats all the way down, it's reading at 25 ohms. If I bring it up, meaning that it's full, there's gas coming into the tank, it's reading at, well, 250 or whatever you want because this is a universal, you know, type fuel sending unit. So this could work for pretty much every application but as far as trying to get it uh, reading accurately on this thing, you might have a, have a tough time 
um, calibrating this thing to stop at empty or stop at full. Let's go back to this gauge again because I want to um, use this as an example. If you were to go buy this at O'Reilly's and this sending unit, this is the issue that you're going to run into. So again, remember the ohms on here when it's full is 90 ohms and when it's empty it's zero. So let's go back down into this into our ohm meter and I switched this back around by the way that little module. So if I was to bring this up to where it's full it's reading at well let's just say it's full like right here. It's reading at around 50 to 60 uh, ohms. So what that means is that your gauge is not going to quite all land on the full mark correctly. It's going to be a little shy of it or it's going to be past that full mark. I'm not really sure. And then same thing with, with when it's empty, right? Because this has such a big swing, uh, 240. Well, if this is empty and I don't know how long a tank could be, it's, it's reading at 252 ohms. So for empty, Remember, it needs to be at 90. What that means is that when it's empty, you're not gonna, again, you're not gonna get a very good accurate reading. So if you do decide to go with this universal type application, you're gonna, you wanna make sure you cut this thing correctly to the size of your, of the depth of your, your gas tank. Rather than talking about this here, I wanna show you guys what it's doing here in my truck uh, with this sending unit installed in the gas tank. And this is the exact fuel gauge I have in my truck right now. And when I bought this, without knowing all this, what I know now, it doesn't have any ohms uh, rating range information here at all. So that's unfortunate. So let's go to the truck and let me show you guys. All right, so I'm gonna try and one hand this thing. Okay. All right, so we're gonna connect the sending unit on that post. Connect the, the negative here. So this is basically like what we did with our ohm meter. Okay, and let's go ahead and turn the key over and check out this fuel gauge. So by the way, this tank is pretty full. Um, so to see it come up off that that uh, E, where you know where it has a little I don't know what you call it um, limiter knob, it does come up. And that's where it stops. Okay, so let me show you what happens if this thing was empty. All right, so let me pull the fuel tank out. So you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here, how things are reading backwards. Okay, so let me go ahead and connect this guy here. Give me a sec. Okay, so I just connected the, uh, the wire to the sending unit and I'm basically I'm going to move this plunger up and down so you, so you guys can see the fuel gauge, what it's doing. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, lower it down and it goes to full. Right, so that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense, right? And it stopped right there and if I go all the way up with the sending unit, it goes to empty. So this is what I mean by you need to check uh, the manufacturer ohm specification, the range, otherwise you're gonna have a head scratcher and you're gonna be like, what the heck? All right, so let me show you the same thing with this aftermarket sending unit. Let me do this off camera and come back real quick. All right, so I got the auto meter um, sending unit hooked up here and let me go ahead and point the camera to the fuel gauge so let me go ahead and move the meter oh and, and by the way um, I turned the the fuel center unit the, the correct way for this gauge so this should be sort of correct if you will okay so right now <clears throat> I have this the, the float up all the way to the top would indicate that's full right so if I lower it down slowly suggesting that the fuel is now getting empty. Okay, now it's at the very bottom of the swing 
And because, remember, this fuel gauge sender is uh, from, from uh, I want to say 30 ohms to 240 ohms. So if you use this, you're not going to get a very accurate reading. So once again, it's really important that you match your fuel sending ohm with the fuel gauge ohm rating. So there you go. All right, so my main takeaway and the point of this whole thing is that if you guys want an accurate reading on your gas gauge, you want to make sure that the ohm rating, okay, matches the ohm rating on your sending unit. Otherwise, you guys are going to have misread on your fuel gauge, and that's kind of fun in itself, but not fun at the same time. So, uh, and I really hope that this video helped you guys out. You might be working on your project car or truck uh, with these aftermarket gauges. So it was really fun learning all this stuff uh, on my own. And I reached out to my Facebook groups too. Um, but they didn't really have a solid solution other than, you know, check your ground, uh, cross your wires, things like that. But when I really dug deep into why it was reading backwards, well, this is what I learned. So if you guys liked this video and it was helpful, I'd love if you guys would consider, you know, smashing that thumbs up button down below and consider subscribing because that would really help out my channel. And I want to thank all of you guys who's been uh, supporting my channel for all these years. And uh, well, we'll just see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.